Hello everybody, it's Miss Kelly and I am here to read to you today a story about Phineas and Ferb, Destination Amazon. This is also a television show that many of you may have seen in the past or may like to watch um, as recent as today, who knows? But I think they're a fun um, pair of guys, they're brothers, and they like to take all sorts of exciting adventures together. So Phineas and Ferb, Destination Amazon. It was a beautiful summer day in Danville. Phineas and Ferb's friend Isabella was telling the gang about the next Fireside Girls patch she needed to earn. To get the advanced wildlife photography patch, Isabella explained, I have to take pictures of 40 different species in the wild in one day. Mrs. Fireside herself will be coming at five o'clock sharp to award the patch, Isabella continued, so I don't have much time. That's easy, Buford grunted. Three words, Danville Zoo. What part of In the Wild do you not hear, Belgique asked. There's Phineas and Ferb and Isabella and the crew. Ferb, I know what we're going to do today, Phineas exclaimed. We're taking our new crocmobile to the most biodiverse place on the planet, the Amazon rainforest. A few minutes later, the gang was ready to go. Isabella snapped a group picture as they climbed into the crocmobile. The engine roared to life and they took off for Brazil. Phineas! Just then, Phineas and Ferb's sister Candace came outside to bust her brothers for... something... Candace shrugged. They'll be back. It's not like they're going halfway around the world or anything. Meanwhile, Perry the Palatopus had snuck away and had just arrived at Dr. Doofenshmirtz's headquarters, but he was immediately trapped. Oh no! I'm running a little behind schedule today, Perry the Palatopus, the evil scientist called out, so if you don't mind, I'll skip the chit-chat and go straight to the beholding. Behold, my amazing d lumberinator I was going to use it to remove all the wood from City Hall, Dr. Doofenshmirtz explained. So it would collapse and I could take over. But who wants to rule over a broken building, right? There's his evil plan. So instead, I'm taking it to Brazil, where I got a very handsome offer to clear away a pesky endangered rainforest to create profitable cattle grazing land. With the money I'll make, I can buy City Hall. Soon, Dr. Doofenshmirtz and his captive were flying high over the Brazilian rainforest. Neither of them could see Phineas, Ferb, and their friends chugging up the river below. Floating beneath the leafy canopy of the, canopy of the jungle, Isabella had already snapped pictures of a turtle, a giant anteater, and an iguana. Who would have figured the whole crew and Dr. Doofenshmirtz are in Brazil? The clock was ticking as Isabella tried to photograph enough mammals, reptiles, birds, and bugs in time. I keep missing the piranhas, Isabella exclaimed. They're so fast. I got one, Buford grumbled. Oh no, look. I bit them in the tush on his pants. There's a toucan, Isabella exclaimed, but it may be too far away to get a good shot. Ferb, crank up the ladder, Phineas called out. Isabella carefully climbed up the ladder until she was looking the colorful bird right in the beak. Watch the birdie. Phineas and Ferb, always to the rescue. A jaguar, Isabella shouted a few moments later. Can you get me any closer? Phineas gunned the engine and moved the boat near the jungle cat. 
Strange, that jaguar looks like he is growling, Belgi commented, but I cannot hear him. All I can hear is rushing water. Look out! Waterfall! Buford shouted. I think we're about to go over the falls, Baljeet said nervously as the crocmobile hurtled toward a terrifying drop. Not with these, Phineas exclaimed, activating expandable wings and dual rocket boosters. The boat flew over the plummeting falls just in time. Incredible. Great job, Phineas, they all shouted. A few minutes later, Belgeet was looking at a group of branches curiously. These branches are getting awfully low, he pointed out. Those aren't all branches, Buford said. Gah! Belgeet screamed. Snake! It hissed menacingly at him. Good eye, Belgeet. Isabel smiled and snapped a photo. So far, the gang's trip to the Amazon was proving to be a big success. I've got pictures of 38 animals, Isabella exclaimed as she took a photo of a sloth. How much time is left, Ferb? Ferb held up a giant clock. Ten minutes? Yikes, Isabella cried. Not far away, Dr. Doofenshmirtz had found the perfect spot to launch his delumberinator. Say goodbye to the trees, Perry the platypus, the doctor laughed. I mean, you don't actually have to say goodbye. I know you're not big on talking. As Dr. Doofenshmirtz fired the innator, Agent P rolled his cage into the path of the innator beam. Instantly, the wooden bars of his trap broke apart. Smash! Grabbing two of the wooden cage bars to use as weapons, the platypus leapt through the air toward his nemesis. A short distance away, Isabella had captured a skittering rhinoceros beetle on film, bringing her total number of fo photos to 39. She was so close to earning her badge. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Baljeet said, but we are out of time. But I just need one more photo, Isabella pleaded. Oh, there, a capuchin. Capuchin? Monkey. Just beyond the crocmobile, Perry and the evil doctor were fighting fiercely. Dr. Doofenshmirtz stumbled and fell against the innator. The device fired wildly, hitting a nearby tree, which began to fall in the direction of the delumberinator. Should I curse you now, said Doofenshmirtz, asked with a sigh, or wait for the tree to crash first? Looks like he's in trouble. The falling tree slammed into the innator, causing it to explode. The loud noise startled the monkey, which quickly darted away. Oh no, Isabella cried. I didn't get the picture. Maybe there's a patch for 39 animal photos, Belgeet offered as they headed toward home. Yeah, Buford said under his breath. The good luck next year patch. I'm sorry, Isabella, Phineas said. Back at home, Candace had just spotted the crocmobile flying overhead. The kids floated down into the backyard in individual alligator egg-shaped pods, just as Mrs. Fireside was due to arrive. Mom, you have to see this! There goes Candace again, trying to catch her brothers in action. I only have 39 pictures, Isabella sighed as Mrs. Fireside approached. Hey! Ferb interrupted. Isn't Perry in one of your pictures? That's right, Isabella cried. She held up the photo. That makes 40 animals, Mrs. Fire ex Fireside exclaimed, and such exotic ones, too. How did you do it? With a little help from my friends, Isabella said, grinning. At that moment, Candace dragged her mom into the backyard. They were just in time to see Isabella receiving her wildlife photography patch. You're right, Candace, her mom said. For the first time, there is something worth seeing in the backyard. So here they are landing in the backyard. 
There is Isabella receiving her patch with the help of Perry the Palatopus that made it into one of her pictures. And once again, Sister Candace was not able to catch her brothers in the act. And everything worked out just as planned. What a fun group of friends and what fun adventures they go on. Would you enjoy going on that adventure? I think I would. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great day, and I hope you enjoyed that book. If you haven't checked out Phineas and Ferb, it's a Disney show, um, and I believe it can be found on Netflix or Amazon, but you can give it a search um, and watch some episodes if you, if you have some time. Otherwise, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.